Back tonight here on In Focus, the Department of Sports, Arts and Culture has revealed plans for a so-called mo monument flag of 100 meters in height at a site yet to be determined. The project will carry a 22 million rand price tag. The department has moved to justify the project as a symbol of unity and common identity with a potential to boost tourism. But critics remain unmoved, dismissing it as misguided. For more on this, we're joined now by Brent Specialist Soli Mowen, Kosatu Deputy Parliamentary Coordinator Matthew Parks, and South African Communist Party's uh, uh, First Deputy Secretary Soli Mabaila. Gentlemen, good evening and thank you very much uh, for your time and uh, joining us uh, tonight up here uh, on In Focus. Uh, Ms. Rafaela, let's begin uh, with you first. I mean, does South Africa need a flag to boost and enhance nationhood and common identity, never mind the flag costing us a 22 million rand tag? Firstly, thank you very much for inviting us. Your question is uh, combined into two. The first one is that, yes, South Africa do need a flag uh, which should represent national identity, uh, which, of course, that identity must be properly defined. For instance, what are we and what are, as a nation and what are our values, what makes us common as South African? Um, that is, uh, the, the flag plays that uh, unifying role. It's a very important aspect um, in any country's life. Uh, that's why, for instance, uh, today South Africa's flag is in the court because the previous flag represented oppression, exploitation, colonialism, imperialism, and yet this flag was supposed to mean uh, unity, peace, and development, as well as embracing all different uh, nationalities uh, in diversity in the context of the country that we are trying to build. So in that regard, the flag becomes important, and therefore it must never be demeaned uh, in any way uh, by whatever projects that comes uh, come up are about. But in the context of uh, the second secondary question, which I'm saying must always be separated from the value of the flag is the issue about uh, this money to be spent on a particular project, um, uh, which I think uh, can be uh, reversed or re reviewed, uh, because I think in the context of uh, national priorities, uh, it hasn't come out right. But the flag is important for, for the country, but it's not just the paper flag or the, the, the cloth flag that is important, is what it symbolizes, its value content, that should be uh, uh, the rallying point rather than uh, it, it, it's uh, 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 what is currently in the court. If, if in fact, uh, look into what the right wingers, right wing forces in this country who are trying to reassert themselves differently and reasserting racism and oppressive uh, government and uh, uh, disregarding the pain that uh, the old flag has caused in this country. Uh, in terms of uh, colonialism, uh, appropriation of our own land, appropriation of our own nationhood. This flag seeks to rebuild the new nationhood, and therefore this must be two separate uh, uh, things. But in the context of our challenges as a country, uh, a symbolic uh, uh, use of, a flag, of, of, of this nature of a flag costing 22 million is too much to ask. All right. Let's bring in Soli Moeng as well here. I mean, uh, 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 the, the minister's posture is that this flag monument project would be a social cohesion, national unity, and nation building amplifier. And we've, we've failed to amplify nation building up until this far. How, how would a monument of this nature uh, help us in that regard? It's nonsense. I'm sorry. This is total nonsense. Uh, we already have a new flag in South Africa. And, you know, just, there's just a, fringe, a small fringe of South Africans who are holding on to the old flag. And each time they're trying to hoist it in public, we've, we, we've all spoken up, uh, up against them. We've spoken up against our reform trying to defend that flag. We do not need a flag to hold the people of South Africa to, together. We need an ethical government, ethical leadership, mm -hmm. a government that is, doesn't spend its time defending the indefensible. All right, if you want to, people are already, some people, black and white, are already getting angry at the new flag. They're saying, well, this is the kind of things that we're seeing uh, under the new flag. We need a flag. We have a flag. We don't need to spend 22 million rands on a new flag. It's, it's nonsense. It's totally nonsense. Look at the, the state of the economy. Look at the levels of unemployment, the levels of poverty. What used to be pity criminality now, people are walking around stabbing other people to just to take a cell phone from them, a hand, to take a, a hand, a wristwatch from them or a necklace from them. Those people who used to just grab and run, now are armed with guns, with knives to take, to take away from people. 
because people have nothing else to eat. They don't know where their next meal is going to come from. And we have a government that wants to spend 22 million rands on a flip. This is nonsensical. Look at what's just happened in KwaZulu Natal. This money should be going into places where communities around the Salamica, Salamica need help. You know, not into going to a flag. And if you think that a flag is going to unite people of South Africa after they've been angered for all these years, you, you live in a totally different environment, different world. The ANC, I'm sorry, and the ANC, actually, I'm not sorry. The ANC alliance now suddenly lives in a, in a, in a, on a planet of its own. If it's, if it's going to support this thing, it's nonsense. That money can be used somewhere else. The ANC is spending, sending money to Cuba. It's sending, it's spending money in all, every, every other place except where South Africans who are struggling every day need it. It's, it, it can, South Africans need to stand up against this. Matthew Parks is bringing you in here. When a country has been decimated uh, by corruption, others would say rampant poverty, uh, has been uh, decimated by retrenchment, <laughs> unemployment, homelessness, there is very little that um, gets people to stand behind such a symbol as a national flag or, or national pride, so to speak. And so this would be an exercise in futility. What, uh, futility. what, what, what does Akosaki say? Look, you would... Okay. Sorry, sorry, it's for Matthew, yeah? Um, no, we would agree with that sentiment. In fact, we came out uh, early this week to condemn this project. It's an act of madness. Um, the motive, look, we all support the South African flag. There's nothing wrong with the flag, for example. But to spend 22 million rand in this economic climate, when we've lost billions to corruption, when nurses and teachers didn't get the increase in 2020, when we're struggling to provide basic and essential services like toilets and schools, new houses for those who've lost their homes, etc., um, it, it, it's, it's completely bonkers. It shows you a minister, a department, who was so out of touch with the realities of South Africans. And it also shows you a lack of understanding how tourism works. People are not going to come from Europe, from Asia, or North America, so Africa, to come and visit a 22 million rand, 100 meter flag. They were, in fact, they'll just say, this, these guys are evil, and they'll just laugh at us. Tourists are coming to South Africa to look at Tail Mountain, to go to Durban, to the beaches, to go to Kruger Park, to go see the cultural experience of the country. They're not going to come and say, hey, are these idiots willing to waste 22 million rands on a 100 meter flag? To be honest, this is also, also, we might say it's a small amount of money. Sure, the broader scheme of things, it's a small amount of money. But this is the kind of callousness in a government that can spark a revolt amongst ordinary members of the public. How do you tell nurses and teachers, we can't give you an increase in 2020, you must tighten your belt now, but are willing to spend this kind of money on a silly uh, politician's ego? It makes no sense. At the same time, this very same department in 2020 failed to pay millions of rands to artists and to musicians who couldn't earn income because of the lockdown. It really it, it beggars belief, and we think government should intervene. We've called upon Treasury and the presidency to intervene. It must really be scrapped. Yeah. We cannot afford this kind of wastage, which is taxpayers' money, which is workers' money, when we're dealing with so many crises here, and government really needs to get an urgent wake-up call. Now, there are those who are arguing, Matthew, that this, this project could get I imagined as a, a living human cultural space uh, that uh, would breathe uh, yet another life into, into the country where people can converge and uh, it could unify as post the, the, the 1994 South African flag. I mean, uh, do, do, do you see it as, as playing that role? Look, I, we should not bully the flag. The flag is a wonderful flag. I think all popularly adjusted people in South Africa like the flag. Leave aside the lunatics in Afri Forum, and good luck to them. So the flag is good to have it at schools. Let's have it at schools, displaying it as part of building that sense of nationhood, cohesion. Sure, we support that. But we can't be so blasé about the realities of the country where we have a 46% unemployment rate, where millions of people are struggling to survive, where many of the workers have lost wages, are highly indebted, and people then see government, what are you doing with our taxes? Why are you wasting it on these white elephants? It makes no sense. If the Department of Arts and Culture wants to play a role to, to support tourism, well, let's, let's, let's go to Robin Island and fix Robin Island. Let's get it back to the world-class heritage site uh, status that it's meant to be. That will attract tourists because, if you know, you go to Waterfront, you will see queues and queues of tourists all the time. Let's bring more boats um, to ferry tourists from Waterfront to Robin Island. That can create jobs, that can bring revenue to the country, and tourists definitely will come to see Robben Island, and there's a social cohesion value to it, without a doubt. But look at the neglect of Robben Island and countless other tourist projects in South Africa. Um, right now, if you look at today's papers, um, 
that is, I think, St. Lucia Park in KZN, or Lushue, if I get the name right, sorry, where about 100 rhinos have been poached this year, 100 rhinos poached last year. So if we're serious about bringing tourists, let's address these real crises, and let's not, let's not go and play games with taxpayers' money. Really, it's, it's beyond belief in the fact that the minister uses every forum of all organizations to justify <laughs> this. It really just begs belief. He should show a little bit of humility and say, guys, I made a mistake. I hear you. Let's, let's withdraw from this project. So, Lima uh, Paile, perhaps uh, the 22 million more than the, the flag itself is actually needed for the construction of, of the monument, uh, but the, the construction itself could be a life-size cultural tourism attraction, an amusement park, something of a lifestyle feature that could bring some innovation. I'm just trying to argue on behalf of this flag monument at this particular point. I mean, what do you say to those kinds of arguments? Well, I mean, I, like I said, this is too much to spend on a flag, uh, this 22 million. Uh, if they are launching a cultural activity or a cultural platform, it's something different. And I think uh, that one would not have a difficulty for any cultural activity or program that is launched by the same department. But if uh, this is based on this, uh, this flag, uh, it's certainly uh, not in the right direction. I think that um, I agree with uh, 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 Comrade Matthew. I don't agree much with the insult per se to the minister. But I think that uh, the content of uh, what even the, by the previous speaker, by the way, before Matthew, uh, although he's conflating things and even bringing the issue about Cuba, which is something else that we can have a discussion with him about that because Cuba spent more uh, a life uh, paying uh, for the liberation of this particular country, for the freedom that uh, today he can have freedom of expression in this platform because of death of Cubans, not only for South Africa, but for many other African countries, including defending the liberation of Angola. Uh, so uh, it's something, it's a, it's a different uh, element altogether. And I think he mustn't uh, join the, 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 the posture of the Afri Forum in condemning this wrong decision, uh, which we also do not agree with, uh, this wrong decision. But we, we do defend, we, we do believe that the flag is important, but uh, spending this kind of money um, uh, in the context of these uh, current challenges that we face in, in South Africa, like what he explained, and as well as uh, what Comrade Matthew is talking about, we also are in the same page. We agree there. But we mustn't complain this with uh, 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 several other things, uh, particularly uh, as, as we condemn this particular uh, uh, decision. But it's important that in us doing so, we do not let the right wingers uh, to win, to bring back uh, the wrong ideas uh, in this country regarding. Uh, white supremacy and so forth. But uh, to respond to that, you need to, st to strengthen the economy. You need to make sure that the public sector plays a major, much more role and we discipline capital uh, in the context of job creation so that people can see the value of being one country and the flag can play that uh, unifying role. We can't have a, a flag that plays a unifying role in a country divided usually by inequalities. So the money that's supposed to be spent just literally on this question of the flag uh, in this particular project, that's why we're saying it's too much to ask. And I think that uh, the minister, in his wisdom, will have to review this matter. Let's take a break. When we continue next, Soli uh, Moeng will respond and uh, we'll wrap up this conversation uh, tonight uh, with our panel. Stay with us and focus continues in a moment. Welcome back live tonight. Uh, we are talking to Brent Specialist Soli Moen, Kosafu Deputy uh, Parliamentary Coordinator Matthew Parks, as well as the African Communist Party's First Deputy Secretary, that is Soli Mabaile. Now, let's continue the conversation. Before the break, uh, Soli Moen, Soli Mabaile saying, don't fall prey to the right wing posture of white supremacy by knocking the flag. Uh, speaking negatively also of, of Cuba. You can respond to that. But also we want to get to some of the brand issues. What is it about South Africa's monuments that, for example, makes them not to be as um, uh, uh, splendorous as, for example, the Heifel Tower, which sees about 7 million people annually? Uh, and uh, you see other uh, monuments like the... The, the, the Statue of Liberty, seeing millions and millions of, of visitors. We've got our Freedom Park here, we've got our Apartheid Museum here. It doesn't see that kind of, of traction, but uh, you, you, you can take a vote. Well, thank you very much. Uh, Mr. Mapaila speaks as a communist. I'm not a communist, <laughs> okay, and I'm not part of the, <laughs> of the ANC alliance. So you, you, have, you have to realize that we, this is not just a matter of, for, for, for me, where I stand, 
It means that this government is, is not coordinated. The president continuously stands up to say, I feel your pain, South Africans, I'm doing this, I'm doing this. But then we have a minister running off to spend 20, wanting to 20 to spend 22 million rands on a flag. It means that these ministers, every, it's, it's almost like every minister is a fiefdom of its own. They are not part of one coordinated project to heal South Africa. South Africa is in pain. Okay, South Africa has been in pain for state capture, for corruption, for, for arrogance in politics, for high levels of impunity. There are people who are still working in the corridors of Lutuli House and Parliament who should be in jail, okay? Who should be, if they're not in jail, they shouldn't be in those spaces anymore because they have, they're so compromised. But we still, we still, we, the ANC Alliance continues to redeploy those people who are questionable, who, who do, who, whom South Africans are not happy to look at as people who lead South Africa. All right. If you want South Africans to get together, you don't build a monument. The Eiffel Tower in Paris that wasn't built to bring to, to, to bring French people together. The, 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 all the other monuments that you mentioned were not bring. They, they, they are tourist icons, but you're not going to. The things right now in terms of priorities, South Africa is in pain. South Africans are angry. The, 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 the country that was promised at the dawn of our democracy is no longer. We have a group of politicians at the top. It's almost like an, an Orwellian animal farm. People who are untouchable by the law. Who are free, who, I, I don't want to mention names, but we know them. South Africans are looking around saying, this one, this one is getting away with, with murder. That one is going on. If I were to go into a pick and pay tomorrow and to walk away without paying for whatever, a little item, I'd be spending time in jail. If I don't have money for, for bail, tough luck for me. There are people who have done a lot more, who have taken so much. That's the pain that South Africans are going through. We want to see a government that is caring. You know, if you Google, if you Google any one of you, who are the happiest people in the world or what is the most satisfied country in the world, and it's most, usually going to come from, say, northern in Scandinavia and places like that, and you ask them why are they happy? Because they have a government they can trust. They're happy to pay taxes because they know where the money is going to. In South Africa, for too long, people paid taxes to a government. The money went elsewhere. Now you're talking about about. And now the questions are people are asking is well, wait a minute, who is the, going to be the BE beneficiary of this 22 million rands? So is this, is this some some kind of fundraising ahead of the next elections? People do not trust the, the ANC government. The ANC needs to work harder at winning the trust of South Africans. It's not by building a flag <laughs> at 22 million rands that you're going to win the, with the trust of South Africans. We already have a flag. Why do you need another one? I have a South African. I love the South African flag. Many South Africans love this flag. We don't need a big monument of the flag right now. Maybe in the future when everything is fine but things are not fine right now you the nc do not feel the pain of south africans as a, as a country brand and as leaders of a country brand you are failing every day you fail each decision you make you fail the president who's leading this brand who's the ceo of south africa incorporated should be able to say no i'm sorry minister we're not spending the 22 million rands on that flag you over there stop you over there stop. he's not saying that so everyone is running around as if they're running their own little fiefdom south africans don't want that no, if you think that you're going to build a to, to to erect a flag and whatever else is going to stand on for 22 million rands and south africans are going to come together you know so you shouldn't be in government you failing sorry if you park sir if you look at the reaction so far to the to the story of the 22 million rands is that people many say we love the flag we love the symbol we like what it stands for but we need something else to attach to the flag uh, more than just you saying to us all right let's erect a flag for 22 million and we are all going to look at this and say we are proud of it and gather around it in numbers uh, during uh, our tourist uh, uh, activities what are the features, is a question that I want to ask, that we need to attach to this flag so that people can really find value in it and begin to be proud? Look, I think South Africans, if you remember back in 1994, just before the elections, I think it was March 94, thereabouts, and the flag was kind of unveiled for South Africans. I think 90% plus South Africans loved it. It made sense in terms of how it was designed, how it combined different flags from South Africa's history. So everybody felt a little bit of inclusivity. It's an attractive flag for the eyes, etc. It's quite unique. Um, but we don't need to rubbish the flag by combining with a 22 million vanity project. Not, when, not in this economic climate, not when workers are struggling, not when South Africans are fed up with government abusing funds, not when half of the workers are unemployed. So we, if we want to honor the flag, let's do it at schools, let's do it at churches, let's do it at political parties, trade unions, civics, wherever, at shopping centers, you know. Um, you can encourage people to have the flag at the, outside the houses like they do in the United States, for example. That, that's fine, but just waste 22 million 
because you think it's going to bring tourists. That, that's delusional, it's nonsensical, it's an insult to taxpayers and to workers. It would have made sense, for example, if you say we're going to invest 22 million rand in upgrading Robben Island, in, in investing in security at Kruger National Park, um, in some other national heritage site like Table Mountain, wherever, or maybe a heritage or tourist site in Soweto. That could make sense. And you could argue then it's going to bring tourists there, it's going to bring jobs, etc. But I can't see anyone coming to see us spending 22 million rand on a 100 meter flag. That doesn't make yeah. sense. Yeah. I did a back of the envelope calculation. How would you spend it on a 100 meter flag? Because a flag is not going to cost you 22 million. It might cost you half a million rand because of the quality, etc. The polls show another million maybe, stands another million. So what happens to the other 15 or so million? They get squandered in all likelihood. Um, and really, if we want people to be proud of being South Africans, well, let's make sure we have all schools with decent sanitation. Let's make sure we can get all the informal areas upgraded to decent housing. Let's see how can we reduce unemployment. Let's see, as, as I think both solids would say, definitely, people will have stolen, including senior politicians, going to jail. That will make South Africans proud. Yeah. But this kind of thing is just madness. As an alliance partner, Sonia Mabaila, I mean, uh, uh, trying to understand what the, 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 the minister is trying to do here. Is, is Minister Natim Tetwa, uh, with all due respect, without disrespecting the minister, trying to compete with Afroforum, Afriforum here over flags? What, what is actually trying to, to, to be communicated here? No, I mean, uh, firstly, the, the is not competing with Afriforum. Afriforum uh, is fighting to hoist the old flag. And I, and I think that that's a fight for all of us as, as South Africans. In that regard, I think the minister is doing well to defend the flag and to suppress uh, the ox, uh, uh, oppressive flag of apartheid. Uh, that flag has no place in the new South Africa. Uh, it can belong in a museum, yes, but not uh, to be hoisted in public events and so forth. So that's why I keep saying let's not conflate the two issues. And I think that uh, Matthew as well comes on several occasions to defend the flag, but deal with this problem of this uh, 22 million. We don't need the 22 million for any other pro uh, project in the name of the flag. That's the point that we're all saying. What we're simply saying is that, yes, there are many challenges in this country that we must be dealing with. That's where the money should be uh, focused on. And if that money is, uh, Matthew has, has gone into it at length, actually, to, to highlight even uh, basic intervention areas where this money could be be spent, for instance, if it, it, it is meant for any cultural development or bringing tourists in the country, in the areas where the money could be, could be spent, not to be spent on the flag, but to fight against Afri Forum on this thing, uh, yes, it's a good uh, posture, and I think on that we should uh, commend the minister for standing strong, uh, for fighting against, because uh, white supremacy, it's a big problem in this country, and the reason why the majority of our people remain poor it's not only much about uh, the, the fact that the ANC may not have performed well or the alliance in, in, uh, in general uh, headed by the ANC. It's largely because of lack of uh, transformation at the rate of pace that is required. For instance, uh, finance capital uh, continues to be uh, held by a white minority, and that's a dominant uh, economic sector in our country. So we need much more political interventions into that. And I think that even this matter should not divert us. The inclusiveness of the flag should be in an uh, inclusive economy where the people see themselves as equals and they can all be proud about the flag. So the vanity uh, issues about the flag must be dealt with separate from the flag itself. That's why it's important that we, we, we address this matter. To the extent that uh, this project is, is being made in the name of the flag, and I think that, that, that that's the part that we have to, to look into this matter and review it. But it must fight against uh, the right-wing elements like Afroforum, who wants to, to have the right to hoist the, uh, the, the apartheid flag everywhere. We fought against that flag. We fought against that uh, oppressive government, because that's what it symbolizes. And there, there must be no compromise about it. So, Lima I appreciate your time, First Deputy Secretary of the SCCP. We also have a uh, uh, brand uh, specialist uh, there, Soli Moeng, as well as Matthew Parks, representing Kosatu's parliamentary coordinator there. Thank you very much uh, for your time.